Hello everyone, welcome to the English devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. Let's begin our devotional opening up in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. I ask you, Father, that if there is anything in my life that does not please you, that you will wash me clean and forgive my sins, Lord, so my prayer can enter into your throne. Thank you, Father God, for your mercy, your grace, and your love for us. Help us in this day to bring honor and glory to you in everything that we do, every word that we speak, every decision that we make, Lord. Help us to glorify you in everything. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunities that you present before us to talk to people about your word. Father, give us the courage to speak out and to testify of the things that you have done in our life. Father, may we, with our words, bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's devotional is titled, To Be a Pastor. It was written by Morama Gonzalez and translated by Stacy Martinez. Our biblical base comes from Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. So says the word of God. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. To be a pastor is to surrender your life, to press on without rest despite your bleeding wounds. To be a pastor is to come face to face with the miseries of the human race. To be a pastor is to fight with all your strength, to smile through your tears, not measuring time lost or graying hair. A pastor does not look back, but instead moves forward pressing on. To be a pastor is to lead those who follow. A pastor evangelizes the world. He encourages and inspires enduring suffering without complaint. A pastor gives the appearance of timidity, but has more courage than most. To be a pastor is to often be absent from the home, laboring for the kingdom of God. A pastor spends nights without sleep, praying for you without ceasing. To be a pastor is to visit the sick, poor, and elderly, being a true example of what it means to serve. To be a pastor is to walk with Jesus in your heart, to reach into the darkness where there is no hope, and show that in Christ there is salvation. Lord, give us shepherds after your heart. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may we thank God for the pastors that he has put in our way, in our path. When we have a pastor who lays down his life for the church, for the congregation, who presses on even when things seem dark, we must give thanks for them. Do you know that we have been commanded in scripture to pray for our pastors, for our leaders, for our governors? Pray for them. Their task, their job, their calling is not an easy one. And we sometimes take for granted. Well, sometimes when we get sick or we're struggling, we have the temptation to say, my pastor hasn't called me. My pastor hasn't come to visit me when we are sick. But my question is, have you called your pastor to let them know that you're struggling? To let them know that you're sick and to ask them to come and visit? 
Our pastor's jobs are great. There's so much to do, but you can help by reaching out and letting your pastor know, hey, I need a visit, I'm discouraged. Call your pastor and let your pastor know how to pray for you. We can do our part in helping our pastors to succeed in this ministry. Pray for your pastors, my brothers and sisters. Pray for their spouses, for their children, because this is not just a ministry of one person, but the entire family. Oftentimes, a pastor's children don't see them from day to day because they're out ministering to us. So pray for them. Pray for peace and understanding, an extra hedge of protection over their families. Pray for our pastors, my brothers and sisters. Amen. May the Lord receive the honor and the glory. You answered the call and obeyed God's command. He sent you here. We know you're in his hand. Your message from the word touches all the very soul. We've seen your faithfulness and we want you to know. Pastor, we love you. We appreciate all you do. And God sees the sacrifice you've made for Jesus. Here's the burden you bear. The Lord's by your side and blesses all that you do. Through the good and bad times, He'll see you through. Pastor, we love you. We appreciate all you do. And God sees the sad. And now we invite you to continue listening to our daily Bible reading that is found in Romans chapter 4, 5, and 6. So says the Word of God. Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. 
For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only, or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, for where there is no law there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses, and was raised because of our justification. Romans chapter 5 Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law, nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 6 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness, and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. And now we ask that the blessed love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the companion and communion of the Holy Spirit, our great counselor, be with all of his children now and forever. Amen.